Happy Wednesday night. Welcome to Deep in the Plus. I'm your host, Rob Whiteside. Thank you guys, as always, for being with us. We appreciate you. If you have not already, please subscribe to WDWNT TV for more great content and give us a thumbs up as it helps people to find us. You you came on a good night. It is a St. Patrick's Day event every year when we talk about St. Patrick's Day and we try to marry in something from the Disney Plus library, but you can't talk about St. Patrick's Day without Patrick. How's it going, buddy? I just realized I'm not wearing green. What a terrible Patrick I am right now. I think there must be a little bit of green in here, but you're gonna get pinched, decided... boy. You gotta get pinched. No. I'm Patrick. I am pinch proof. <laughs> uh welcome everyone. Thank you for being here with us. If you have not been with us uh before, this is Deep in the Plus, where we go deep into the Disney Plus catalog and we pull something out. And we talk about it, and we get into it. And uh, every year we do St. Patrick's Day. Patrick, you started this. Yeah. Uh, you started this tradition, and I guess it's because it's your namesake. But we've done it is. Darby O'Gill and the Little People. That was an easy awesome. grab. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was an easy grab. We did then Luck of the Irish. Yeah. And then we started reaching, and we did we, Happiest we Millionaire. Are <laughs> and Had an now, Irish guy in it. <laughs> and this one. Uh, it is like the quintessential reach because we are doing you lucky dog and like you lucky dog. When you mentioned it, I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about, dude. Like this can't even be a thing. Uh, and you're like, no, no, I looked it up. It's on Disney plus. That's our only, yeah, it is. Has, to be, has to be on Disney plus. Uh, yeah. and so I was like, okay, well, we'll, you know, uh, as long as we can, as long as we've got each other. I know? see what you did. <laughs> this is this is at the end of that and before Fresh Prince. So this is like a, a crossroad of careers for our two stars here. Um, Rob, I am so excited for this episode. It's not even funny. I'm like <laughs> ready to get into it and gnaw on it like a bone that has some juicy morsels left on it. Just don't get too excited. Everything's coming up uncomfortable right now, my friend. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and again, thank you guys for being with us in the chat. We appreciate you. We'll be watching uh, as you guys are talking. I see that Piano Rob is in the chat. Uh, the Rob and Rob show, Ronald says. That's awesome. Uh, no, that's Patrick. Um, so when, when when you picked this out, the first thing that you yeah. brought to my attention was it was Kirk Cameron. And here's the thing that I saw second is it's a DCOM. You and I have had not a lot of it luck is. about DCOMs, dude. We have not had good vibes with DCOMs, although uh, Luck of the Irish did pretty well. Don't We've even say watched it. some amazing decoms like <laughs> the greatest Alley Catch Drake. We've watched the high school musicals. Yes. We've you're watched right, you're the right. quintessential nineties film Brink. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for you. And uh we're doing the second ever decom now. I think Halloween will have to come back and do the first. Because it's okay. under wraps is the first one. Oh, okay. So this was the second one. That yeah. that second that makes one, sense. Yep. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Because when it opens, one of the things that is like kind of the giveaway that it's a decom is it opens like cold open. Like there's no yeah. it's just like boom, there's Kirk Cameron's Info face. Info dump. Yeah, exactly. Uh we're seeing credits, we're hearing this together song, which is like nominated for an Emmy. <laughs> nominated for an Emmy. It sounds like off market Randy Newman. Like Tamu Randy Newman. It's it is horrible. One foot, two foot. Yeah. It sounds it sounds like like and oddly it feels like Randy Newman ripped ripped off you got a friend in me from togetherness. Cause yeah. it's very similar. Yeah, and I, I just in my notes I just listed it as the togetherness song, so uh yeah it's 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 a weird one all right but um mm -hmm. when it opens it's all again like i said it's this uh it just opens hard and then it's got all these pictures of kirk cameron as jack who is our our lead uh i love that it's got the you know it's in the the original format of how tvs used to be back in the in the yeah in the i like that hundreds. it felt nostalgic yeah, and then, you know, uh, boy reads dog's mind, and we're seeing all these headlines, and we're learning through this rather than this blatant in-your-face um, uh, just, yeah. uh, what do you call it? I, I like it. it. I have to say exposition. Exposition, yeah. thank you. Um, I that's, like That's it. a movie I it's, word. It's, I think it's a lot better than, than exposition. We're getting 
all the information we need to learn about these characters without having somebody do clumsy dialogue about it. But, I mean, this is 19, uh, uh, 1998, 98. right? Yeah. Yep. Man, CGI, Photoshop, whatever we're working with at this point, that is pretty bad. We couldn't have gotten <laughs> old, old pictures of Kirk Cameron for this. It, the, no. the touch-ups are horrible. Horrible. How dare you, Worse sir. than Kate Middleton. Whoa. What? Whoa. No, no, That's right. no. It's St. Patrick's Day. I'm allowed to take shots at the British royal family. You're so topical. It's fine. <laughs> uh... Or I'm dating this episode for someone to watch it later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so this was 1998. Uh, it was an hour and 20 minutes, 28 minutes, and it's a decom. Um, I, I, here's the thing. Where's what was the pitch meeting? You know what, Kirk? We got we got an idea for you, buddy. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to be a dog psychic. And he's like, I like it. Okay. What else? And they're like, My wife well, has you're... to be in the movie with me. <laughs> and you're connected to the dog in such a way that he his personality takes over you and you morph into the dog kind of like the shaggy da oh okay so i'll morph into it and i'll have hair no 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 you just get down on all fours and start barking and crawling As around you. and eating bones and he's like let's do it i'm in now if this was today i'd say well he just wanted a producer credit but i i don't what like what was what was the catalyst what like well, I think our best bet is to not talk about Kirk Cameron of today. I think that's going to be, uh, I mean, this is where he was at at this point in time in his career. You know, we talked about it a lot. He did the computer war tennis shoes, that TV movie that we are waiting for it to be on uh, Disney plus. He had a short lived sitcom, um, 31 episodes called Kirk. Uh, he did a couple, one episode of a show called hope and Gloria. I mean, he wasn't doing much since growing pains. He has his, beliefs that he believes very strongly in and he hasn't worked much except for roles that he really wanted i don't know if this is hey let's get paid it's like i have a great history with disney let's see what we can do here but i don't know the, yeah. the writer does not have very many credits either uh, tell me this does not look dime store knockoff Randy Quaid. Tell me that's not Cousin oh, Eddie yeah, no. stand in right there. And we, we have our, our Randy Quaid and then we have our like Nick Cage stand in and, uh, Oh, Taylor it, Negron. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah. Ta Taylor Negron. My wife walked by real quick and she's like, is that, I'm like, no, it's a guy named Taylor Negron. It's yeah, I get it. It's not Nick Cage. No. So, um, you, uh, this is, okay. Yeah, go ahead. This is like. 80s 90s tv royalty here um even the woman who's playing one of uh the housekeepers she's in everything um it just man it it hit all the right tones for me i'm oh it's so good okay it's so, good. so right no no we're fine we're fine we're gonna keep going through this so when when it opens we learn through again through the the newspaper articles that when he was younger uh, Jack was a dog psychic, and so then they cut to him being a dog therapist. And we, you know, at this point, we don't know that he's not. It's like, okay, that that seems like a good idea. If he can talk to dogs or connect to dogs, he can be a dog therapist. And so we cut to these two people, Dime Store Randy Quaid and his wife, are sitting there trying to figure out, you know, if they can find out what's wrong with their dog. Their dog is in with Kirk or Jack, and in his office, then we see the dog sitting there. And he's asleep. Then we find out things aren't going so great for Jack. He's not able to make the rent. Uh, he's he's not able to pay his secretary, and uh, and and he's been exposed as a fraud. Very strange yep. because we just were told in the opening that he had this ability, like it was documented in in the newspapers that he had this ability. He was a genius. He was a big time of his time. And now we're finding out he's a fake. Uh, and so that was a little roller coaster ride for me for a little bit. I'm like, what are we doing? Uh, and then this very rich man comes in and says, talk to my dog. He's like, I don't really want to, but I'll take your money. And he goes in and he connects with the dog, but he doesn't seem to understand the power. Mm. I, I, in, and you know how I am about rules. There are a lot of rules with this that I don't think make perfect oh, sense. Boy. So I think the one thing that we really missed is how did he lose the power? 
So he had this power and then it was gone. Was it the connection to his one dog? Did it carry on to other dogs? Um, I think if people believed I could talk to dogs and I suddenly lost that ability, I would do exactly what he's doing. I'm going to keep that charade up as long as I possibly can. Um, I think the rule is he could, he, he had it, he lost it. And this dog lucky came into his life and he can again, but I don't think he got it until after. Okay. Um, <clears throat> by the way, Taylor Negron has a, again. We'll talk about Cast later, but has a huge resume. I was I was trying to remember what yeah. specifically I remember him from in like the early like the late eighties, early nineties. But it wasn't this. I can tell you that much. It wasn't this. No. Um, this is this was my first time seeing this movie. It was it your first time seeing it? I not sure. I feel like I might have seen it before. It has that kind of. You've definitely watched this on a rainy day. Go back to, to what I always say, when the Disney Channel wasn't free, it was an add-on, and you got that free weekend, if this popped on, you know, maybe you watch it. Yeah, so here's the thing is, I uh, there were a lot of movies this reminded me of. Me too. Uh, uh, it, there was a time where he's in the bathtub once he's, uh, I guess, to further the story along, old man dies, uh, his driver comes back, grabs him, takes him to this mansion there's a will being read all of his uh three horrible like nieces and nephews are cut out of the will fantastic 80s 90s villains just perfect by the way we haven't mentioned the person who who accompanied the the old rich man and who eventually comes and picks up jack is the incomparable the wonderful the shredder himself uncle phil james avery yes Yes, I, he it was not Uncle Phil at this moment, but yes. He was not um, Uncle Phil yet. So there was part of me that was like, hey, did somebody watch this? And was like, that guy, that's our Uncle Phil. Uh, he's a, he's, uh, I'll, I'll find a shot of him here. In this one, he, he's a, he's a good looking man in this one. He's, uh, he's, he's, he, is, he's he always has fit. a presence about him. Yeah, but he's no. fit and, uh, and he comes in later. Uh, but here's, uh, here's Uncle Phil here. Hang on a second. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're right. He, I yeah. mean, he's very tall. Uh, he's a little more. I feel like uh, svelte in this uh, in this this version. So, um, you know, yeah, that's the thing. We're jumping into cast. Let's jump into cast. Let's talk about. It. So we we were already yeah, talking about Kirk. About we don't really need to yep. talk about Kirk. Um, mm-hmm. Christine Cavanaugh. Now, when I when that name mm-hmm. popped up, I was like, I know that name. I don't know why I know that name. And when I saw this woman who plays his secretary, I was like, Well, you know what? Um, she sounds familiar, but she doesn't yeah. really look well, all that familiar. Uh, do you know who? Do you know who she was, or did you already look her up? She's a uh, babe. She's the voice of Babe and Chucky from yep. the Rugrats, which was a bigger deal yep. to me. And then also Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. So yeah. Um, yeah, that was, but but I was thought that was weird. Like, why do I know that name and why? But and I yeah. recognize the voice a little bit, but uh, but yeah, I don't see her. Um, so Taylor Negron, like I said, I, was one that you know I get the whole he kind of looks Nick Cagey in here, and he's definitely mm-hmm. losing his hair and all that. But I remember him from something else. He is a good comedic actor. He's been in a ton of things. He's a good that guy, <laughs> like Stephen Tobolsky. Yeah, you know, yes. you know that guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Ned. <laughs> um, this gentleman right here, all I see when I see him is Q from Star Trek: Next Generation. Like immediately with the big, like Whoopi Goldberg hat and the whole deal. So, um, do you, do you, do you watch Star Trek: Generation at all? Next Generation. I I did not. No, no. Uh, it was Encounter at Farpoint. It was the first episode uh, he was on there, and then I think he was also in a couple in the middle, and then he was in uh, the last episode, John Delancey. So uh, he plays Lyle Windsor. Um, and then Chelsea Noble, how did they get her? I don't know. You know, she's a real tough get. She has a lot of really high-profile credits to her. Um, I don't understand how they could pull somebody – who has been in in such amazing films, Left Behind, 1, 2, and 3. She did do an episode of Seinfeld once, though. Did she now? 
Yeah. Uh, so she plays the lawyer, Allison, Allison Kent. Um, and so mm-hmm. she's uh, she's got a big high profile job and she is the executor of the will. She reads the will and all three of them are cut out, but they've gotten one thing each to represent how horrible they were. And then we find out that Jack has been named the executor and all the money's going to Lucky the dog. Uh, and so yes. the reason that Jack is there is to be able to interpret Lucky's needs so it reminded me of that that TV show, and I can't remember the name of it. That is on Disney Plus, where the family has to move in with the ape, who's a puppet, uh, and that like they oh get my the house. god, yes, yeah, they get the house if they live with the ape. Um, so it reminded me of that kind of a thing. But when when all of this is going down, uh, I'm just like, how much time has You're lapsed between? Timber. Oh, thank you, Kesha. Um, the, the the how much time has lapsed between when he met Jack at the dog psychiatrist and now because that's there's a Days, lot of paperwork weeks? in a will. It feels like weeks. I guess so, but it, I mean they left the ha- breadcrumb there. They did leave the breadcrumb there that something was afoot, though. I thought that was pretty good. I have to say, for a lot of the faults that we could talk about in this movie, why would we talk about faults? <laughs> I mean, it's not perfect. Um, the storytelling is pretty good. Every little thing that they kind of laid a path about came and, and came to fruition. The one thing is what happens to a secretary. I felt like she deserved something in that. I really wanted to see. But when they're in the room, he's talking for the dog and says, you're having stress or trouble or problems with three people living in your home. And that's kind of where we leave it. Bum, bum, bum. Yes, that is exactly what happened there. Um, yeah. So it's it's really interesting, though, that, like I said, I feel like there's a bunch of different movies in here. Once Jack gets yes. into the house, he right. is in the bathtub, and he's, he's acting like he's never been an adult before, and he's got all these toys outside the bathtub, and I'm thinking of Big, thinking of Tom Hanks in this, Davies like— Playhouse? Can, I, but I, it, I I could see that. But I was thinking, like, again, yeah. Tom Hanks and the whole, like, I don't know how to act as a big boy because I have all this money and I'm going to go and, and buy all these things. So I thought well, that they have was the very the very telling I've never been rich before line, which I thought was really funny. Um, yeah. I think part of the story that if it's not a TV movie that might get expanded upon a little bit more is his arrested development. What happened to him? What in the years between being this ingenue and losing his power and kind of becoming this shysty, um, you know, dog psychiatrist, what happened? It's there's there's a bigger movie in this movie that guided by someone else's hands could be different. But I think for what they put out there, it's exactly what it should be. What I'm hearing you say is Disney plus prequel. That's what I'm hearing from you is you want to get hell. Yeah. Let's go. I reboot it, make it a TV show. Why are they putting like all sorts of weird new properties when we have existing stuff you can just mine from, there is no need to buy Fox and waste all that money. We got you lucky dog. 18 Give versions a, of Freaky Friday, uh, the Herbie series, 17 uh, versions of Cinderella. Parent Trap. Uh, well, speaking of which. <laughs> Speaking of yeah. which, we know – wasn't Kirk in a, uh, a body switch movie? Was Kirk in a body switch movie? Maybe he wasn't. I thought he was. I don't know. I feel like uh, now that you're saying that, that it makes sense. Like uh, I feel like it was with um, George Burns, but I could be wrong. Wow. Yeah. Like father, like I mean, son. Only – Oh, with Dudley Moore. Oh, okay. I vaguely remember that. I was going to say, for as long of a career that he has had, he only has 45 acting credits. So he's been very particular with his roles, especially later in his career. Yeah. Yeah, so so he was in a body switch movie, which I feel like is a little bit what's going on here. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, with that, so... Um, (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, you know, you can't go wrong with working with dogs and a body switch movie. You can't, you gotta, you gotta pay your dues to Hollywood. Um, mm-hmm. So, so uh, the other thing, like I said, big, I'm getting vibes from that. 
then I get vibes of mm-hmm. Home Alone when the uh, a little when bit the, yeah yeah when the when the uh, the three baddies jump like break into the house and they're like tripping on dog toys and all this other stuff. Um, so that was a thing. Herbie a little bit because here's the thing that we talked about on the last Herbie where I was saying that Herbie is famously in the newspapers of, you know, he wins all these races and he has established himself as a, an anomaly, as 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 a, a freak of nature. And yet in this universe, in the next generation, they kind of forget all about that and they start making fun of Dean Jones again. That's the same thing here. This guy was documented. There were newspapers. We were seeing it. This He was known as the guy who could talk to or connect to dogs. He was a dog psychic and it was like a, a thing. And now they're acting as if like he's making it up and he's crazy. That bothers me. Yeah. You know what? That That should bother you. Didn't they bring that up in the court case though? I'm pretty but, sure they brought that up in the court case. They did, but then again, he's like, "Well, yeah. you have to prove it to us because there's no way that's true." Yeah, but even though you but already proved it back then, yeah, right, and, and yeah, so it, it wasn't that, the most the the legal drama of it all wasn't exactly you know legal. <laughs> <laughs> legal, okay. So here's another thing that I noticed um, is that. The house itself, to me, looked mm-hmm. very much like the Florida Haunted Mansion. And I know it's not, but there was sure. something about this art style. Uh, Show I'll me that exterior. The, I know you I'll got pull it. I'll pull it for you on the big screen. Yeah, okay. There's something that it. felt a little bit like if you, if you cut off the part with, like, the cars yeah. on the side. Also, it looks like there's something up with that. Like, it looks like they put some Disney rolling hedges in front of that like archway mm-hmm. to show to like make this into something that to it's try not. and make it, more depth yeah maybe yeah i guess so but it feels again very much if you just look at that center part like the, the like the haunted mansion yeah, I, can Florida, see it. So. I can see it i mean it's not but again i was getting yeah. those vibes and and you know what i like to share these things with you patrick so yeah. there we go it's all about that's sharing where we are yes uh so Anyway, uh, also, it, in the end, it could have been a Turner and Hooch movie. They could have gone Turner I and Hooch. I got a lot of Turner and Hooch out of this. Yeah. A lot of Turner and Hooch. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, Turner and Hooch, he sacrifices himself and he dies, and then we meet all the puppies. And this one, he sacrificed himself but didn't really die, and then we get all the puppies. We, so we it, almost didn't easy. have an episode today. Because the first thing I did before I went and watched this, I went to the fantastic website, did the dog die. Dog die. Dot com. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, what am I getting myself into? And uh, I'm happy to report that um, Lucky makes it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know how I found out about that? The Ricky Gervais stand up on Netflix. He was talking about the <laughs> website, uh, Does the Dog Die? Um, yeah, it's a good website. Yeah. And then finally, Scooby-Doo, when they were again, when they're in the house and and the the they're breaking in and they're moving around and they're passing each other. It seemed like the whole Scooby-Doo, Scooby gang trying to, you know, make their way down the hallways, running through the wrong doors kind of a thing. I didn't so, really get that, but I can see where you did. Yeah. OK. Um, so he he connects with the dog. Uh, he's not liking it a lot. He's trying. He's struggling with it. But the worst part is there's an extra layer. He's not just a dog psychic, yeah. Patrick. He can channel the dog and become the dog. But it's not a switcheroo. It's sort of a cloned no. mirror image sort of a thing. It's like it's like clone your a seance computer monitors. kind of deal almost. No, complo- like your computer monitor. Like I want to see the same thing. Oh, okay. Both. That's a hmm. uh, seance could be a thing, but that seems like yeah, I feel raising yeah, them like the it's dead. a temporary possession. Okay, but it's but it's simultaneous. Where yes, the dog, the dog and, is still the he, dog, and he is the dog. But then, where does he go? That's a good question. Where does he go? Because he's yep. not. Because I think that in Shaggy Dog there was a switch, maybe, but in this one there's not a switch. He's just no switch. Tamped Double down dog. in there. Uh, I don't know that they ever told us what brings him out of it. Sometimes it's he wakes up. Sometimes it's, it's when a the bonk dog on comes the head. Down. It's when the dog comes down. But there was a time where Uncle Phil shook him and he like snapped out of it. So, 
I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not poking too Again, many holes in that one. I just wish consistent rules. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But I wish that part wasn't there because that's that's very cringe when he has to get down on all fours and become the dog. I think just the fact is that he's very to cringe, the dog... or is it incredibly funny? <laughs> you be the judge. Uh, yeah, I, I, guess... I I feel that it is beyond words funny for reasons i do not know that i found that hysterical the first time with which again unfortunate sexual innuendo and double entendres about burying bones in in that scene where the housekeepers run off but man that scene i was dying i was cracking up and i i don't know why it wasn't that funny but it hit me in just the right spot Speaking of uh, uncomfortable and in just the right spot, um, mm. there was a scene that I was like, "What? What are we? What are we doing here?" And I'm trying trying to pull it up real quick for you. But is it um, is it when they're in the trash can at the mall? Because that no, was that's like, just... all right, that's a bridge too far. I don't know that, why that... that one was. That's just quality content. I mean, that's there's no problem with that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I think that the the one that that gets me is uh, and hang on, let me let me make sure because I, I want you to enjoy the entire scene. Okay. Where he, she's petting him, but he's reacting to it. It's like, oh yeah, that's yes. the spot. Yeah, I was okay. like, really? Yeah, no. Are we doing this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a, all right. Yeah, there's some weird moments. Yeah, there's some weird moments. But again, some you know, when you bring your wife there. along, you could probably get away with a lot more of that kind of stuff. Uh yeah. a scene that was funny and and I don't know I didn't I didn't want it to be, but it was is the scene in the courtroom where they have him face the the jury and the dog face the other way and he's like identifying the 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 cheap hotel pin and did you steal the towels too cuz apparently Lucky has a type 5. Because there's a lot of it where he's right. Rob, you saying that I didn't want it to be funny, but it was, is literally my feeling for this entire movie. Um, you jumped so far ahead. I mean, there, there's so much that happens in this incredibly brisk 90 minute movie, which I appreciate. Um, the whole well, well, end what... courtroom. Let, 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 before yeah. we do that, let's go, we'll we'll go back. Yeah. We'll go back to the shopping spree. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's the worst scene though. I think it's aside from the the couch. I think it's a bad scene. Well, the problem that I have with it is that yeah, uh, is that they do the the shopping spree, and then almost none of that seems to come home with them yeah. it's like and it's a like a whole new of batch stuff of stuff does. it's almost like he figured yeah. out you know what i have all this money all this stuff i'm buying this is chump change let me go to like you know chewy.com and get everything i really want because uh they'll deliver i right did not house. realize pet smart was around in like 98 i thought that was like an early 2000s company i was like oh that's fun petco pals they went to petco yeah, yeah. um uh, but yeah, I thought the couch scene was funny, and then I thought it dragged for a while with the shopping and the shoehorning in the little girl who we never see again. As this, ah, eh. you do see her again. You see her in the end. Oh, that's right, at, at the end. Yeah, yeah. With with all the dogs, they made Dogtopia. Uh yeah. All right. So uh, let's talk about let's talk a little bit more about the shopping spree thing. But I do want to say thank you to everybody who has been watching for it with us tonight. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Uh, we always appreciate you guys hanging out with us on Deep in the Plus. Uh, and every time we do Deep in the Plus, I usually do a trivia about the movie. But I decided, Patrick, you don't need to know the the trivia about this movie. What I need to do is I need to ask you some St. Patrick's Day trivia. That's what I'm gonna do. It's a St. Patrick's Day episode, and you're Patrick. And you know everything about St. Patrick's Day. So This is upsetting. Uh, I've got a few <laughs> <laughs> So I've got a few St. Patrick's Day questions for Let's you. Do Instead, it. I know that you're thinking, thank goodness, Rob, you're not going to torment me by asking me what was the name of the newspaper no, in the because movie or Yeah, no, you don't you don't want to You know, know that. how it is. 
When I like a movie, I am terrible at the trivia. If you haven't caught on, I kind of dug this movie. So I didn't really pay too much attention to the, the minutia of it. Good. I do remember that they, spe- have they spent their last quarter on the vibrating red, which, again, weird adult things in Disney at times. Just mm. Yeah, and that was piped right. right into your house, too. That was the Disney Channel. This wasn't something you went to the yeah. theater to take yeah. your kids to. This yeah. was the Disney Channel. Uh, so here, here's a couple things. You and I reviewed um, Darby O'Gill and the Little People. I uh, about the the King of the Leprechauns. What's the King of the mm. Leprechauns' name? Oh, we're... <laughs> dude! No it's, it's it's it's, 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 years ago? <laughs> it's it's the crown jewel in your deep in the plus history is that you do pa- St. Patrick's Day and we started with Darby O'Gill and the little people had a huge Sheamus. following every year it comes back and it and and people watch it again and if you haven't go already, watch go that. check it out go, go watch check it out I put all yet. the links in this in this episode uh so you can go see all of them yeah show description Sheamus. uh king king brian that's a pretty easy one <laughs> see I thought you would get that one cuz we had talked about it nah all right okay okay well here's some it's... real Deep lore, Irish mm-hmm. traditional trivia. Mm-hmm. What Lucky Charms marshmallow was uh, was retired after only ten years in service? In 2018, it was retired. What marshmallow was retired? A rainbow. This is your heritage, buddy. This is it. This is the rainbow. No. No, hearts, stars, and clovers, horseshoes, and blue moons. Now what? The hourglass. What? It was there for I ten. I don't remember years that at two, all. It was there for ten years, from two thousand eight until um, until two thousand eighteen. And apparently, it was taken right. out because people didn't recognize what it was. So there it is. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. that. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Come on, man. This is this is this is straight out of Irish. Um, in in this movie, um, it's not in the movie itself, but uh, Lucky. What mm-hmm. is Lucky's real name? Oh, I looked this up. Oh, I knew it. Oh, it's something <laughs> fun. It is it's something like fun. Something... That's true. It's something fun and almost dark. Oh, oh man. Oh, this is killing me because you know how much I troll IMDb while I'm watching these movies. You do. I do. Uh, I know. I know. That was an easy one. He's the star of the freaking movie, dude. He is. Um, what is it, Rob? He, Hit me with it. Bogus. Bogus. That's right. Yeah. Don uh, was like, does it start with an H? Uh, <laughs> uh Hogus yeah bogus. good time Ho- hogus no 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 you're doing great buddy you're doing great oh yeah i'm true here's a, here's madness. an easy one here's a softball for you okay here's a softball Lobbing for in. you here we go here's a softball according to irish yes. lore what animal did saint patrick drive snakes. out of ireland snakes. there you go yeah you did it why did it have to be snakes uh aaron yeah. go, go bra means what what does aaron go bra mean come on you're you say it every year dude you're always out there. You're drinking green beer. You're I do not out. drink green Aaron beer, Gobra. sir. Yeah, dude, every year. Every year. It's just like... He... <laughs> oh, my God. There is. There are people... I'm mostly Italian. Uh, I just want to qualify. <laughs> I know. I keep saying it's your heritage. <laughs> I am from... I am Irish, and I, my family's from County Cork, just like Cillian Murphy. So, you know, oscar related um i, I thought it was cillian have... and they called him killian the entire oscars is it killian it probably would make more sense if it's killian yeah um so yeah what does aaron Goldbrock mean my gaelic is very jake very jake just dropped it in the chat oh thank you jake you're very helpful uh ireland forever i, I almost said like go ireland <laughs> so I, that's close <laughs> see there's a man that knows his drinking um so so let's go back. Uh, oh, yeah. This this might be another easy one, and, and I only got two left, buddy. So we're almost okay. there. Good, good, good. What American city has dyed its river green every St. Patrick's Day? 
since 1962. Yeah, Dave Matthews Band's also dropped a whole bunch bam, of poop in that river too. Bam, bam, bam. Added bonus fact. Uh, what would you okay. say? What would you say? Uh, here's the last one. You ready? Yeah. Saint mm. Patrick, Saint Aye. Saint Patrick, I mean, was originally was originally associated with what color? Orange. How did? What? Why would you say orange? Uh, it's either that or navy blue. It's one of the. It's two. Bl- it's blue. It's blue. Yeah. Is that one of the colors that like if you're really Scottish? Then you wear, uh, yeah, 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 and and, and not and not green for Irish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but like I knew it was thing. orange or blue. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh. <clears throat> anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you for playing, and thank you guys in the chat for playing. It's fun to watch everybody uh, shooting their answers out there. A lot of people didn't know about the hourglass or forgotten about it. So I once you saw it, I was like, oh yeah, I've seen that. I probably everybody probably assumed it was like gold or something. I don't, it's not even in the rhyme. Heart, stars, uh, clovers, horseshoes, and I know. Balloons. It's extremely random. I mean, I don't understand really, like, why you would have thrown that in there. But, yep, there it is. And, again, it's just a blob. It doesn't even quite, you know, I mean, they're all off, just like... blobs. By the way, if you, like, store-bought sugar cookies, there is one of the major brands has a Lucky Charms sugar cookie that's out right now. And it is a fantastic little treat. So go pick that up for yourself. Nice. Are you yeah. hashtag sponsored? No. I wish <laughs> I was. That's just uh, hashtag free advertising. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So after let, – let's go back to the um, – to the uh, um, yeah. let's go back to the shopping spree. So they're having the shopping spree oh, no. at the mall. For some reason yeah. – the dog wants to go to the mall. Like, is that a place where, like, his owner had taken him a Maybe. bunch? Maybe. Just... I feel like it could be because his owner and him are very, very close, and it feels like he was always going places with his owner. And also, it's, you know, late 90s. The mall is just, we're, we're going to go to the mall. It's going to happen in one of these movies. I feel like we should watch every decom and see how many times they go to a mall. I bet it's a lot. Let's, uh, it reminds me, did you ever watch How I Met Your Mother and Robin Sparkles' yeah. Let's Go to the Mall? Yeah. We'll build sand um, castles in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Sand. Yeah, exactly. So. Yes, I love uh, you. <laughs> you are a super fan of Robin Sparkles. Um, the last when, one when they're, Daggers. When, when they're in the mall. Yeah. And they're riding around in the train. This thing pops yeah. up. <laughs> Didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. <laughs> Yep, watch this right that... before bed, and I was like, the heck? <laughs> Can't sleep. Man's going to get me. He's got a rope yeah. belt. He's got a bowl cut. He's uh, he's a little scary. He's like Sheriff of Nottingham. He's like... filthy. He's so filthy. <laughs> and, and the funny thing was, as I was watching this, I, I was like, um... Okay, like, is that actually, was that actually somewhere in a mall in the 90s? I don't know. But they start on the train... And as the train is moving around the track and we see, like, you know, Lucky is on the train and they pan up to it. And as they're panning up, I'm like, wait, what? what is this? What? What? Uh, uh, oh, what? Like, it's just so wild. Like, what? I and like they... the kids who very clearly instructed not to look at the camera as they were going by. It was so <laughs> painfully obvious as kids were, like, dodging their gaze from the camera. Yeah. So in 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 between here and when we actually see them build the room, they go to the food court and yep. he's he's eating like a dog. And you mentioned this before, the, the trash can and all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. did she not like did Allison not see this happen? Because then later she's like, oh, you didn't tell me this was a thing you do. She was there at the mall with him and but he she ran off to the seem food court to be with him there. I know. I, what happened? I don't know. He ran off Maybe for food. Maybe she went home Did with she... her daughter. Okay. The, the Irish yeah. goodbye. There's your tie-in. Mm. There's there your you tie-in. Go. Irish yeah. goodbye. I knew we'd get there. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, they they cut back to the house where uh, they're unloading like tons of stuff, but not anything that they bought at the mall. And that's why I'm like, this, that, this seems dis- – yeah. it almost seems like they shot two different options. 
and they went with option B. No? Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're searching for too much continuity there when it really doesn't matter. Do you know the thing that kind of got me is I was like, hey, those floors are very clearly valuable. You you have to do something. Just put the AstroTurf over it. Why are you demolishing those floors? Dogs, here's the thing you need to know about dogs, Patrick. They don't know yep. the value of resale. They just don't. They don't think about it. That's actually documented. The dogs don't know about resale. No resale value. Yeah. Because um, they're probably not going to former... live to see the house sold. The value, yeah. As a former yeah. dog owner, my dog did always slip and fall on slippery floors. So I could see wanting to have indoor uh, AstroTurf. But no need to tear up that marble. You could have sold that lucky. Come on. You know what's funny is that I that's that's a, that's a, an inside dog joke. There should have been more inside dog jokes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we yeah. could have got more like, of that. The sniffing butts thing could have been on there. No, the, let's go to the park. Mm, no. no, it's too classy. No park. It's too classy a yeah. movie. I mean, we already said that there was some really uncomfortable, weird things. Um, like with scratching the ears and the leg twitching and the the first scene with the housekeeper. Um, but yeah, no, we, we didn't need butt sniffing. We did not need that. I wonder if there's a distance that he can stand away from Lucky and not be connected to him. Rob, you are very hung up on this for a very stupid movie. How dare you, sir? How dare you say that it's a stupid movie? Um, it's incredibly stupid and I love it. So here's the, here's the thing is that he's supposed to be the executor of Lucky's will, uh, or, or, you know, uh, his trust. And, uh, and Mm -hmm. so then Lucky, he and Lucky go out and he, they buy things and he, Lucky tells him what things he wants to buy, which couch he wants him to buy. Mm -hmm. I want all five of these. He pulls a power move right off the bat. Lucky has gotten used to it. I thought that was awesome. Quickly. I really liked that. I liked I liked him hopping on the couch. I liked him making sure that Jack sat down. And then I liked that they kind of went through and bought a lot of couches. Because A, he chews up couches. B, dogs like to sit on couches, Rob. It's science. Yeah. yeah, no, it is. The science is there. Um, but but after they pick all that stuff out, then there's all kinds of stuff that comes to the front door, as I mentioned. Steaks and bones and all these things that apparently Lucky picked out. But then they take Lucky upstairs and show him his new room with seemingly things that they picked out and he didn't like did he have lucky's permission to buy all this stuff i feel like lucky yes. had to hmm i don't believe so because he's looking around the room the other thing that was interesting about this scene is they used some very interesting technology what was the, that the, the pause what was is that, that what you're talking about yeah yes. so so they they're they're showing stuff and they move around and then and when pause. we talk about this pause like what? <laughs> I got P A U S E and P A W S. Yeah, 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 no, it works. It works. We're hilarious, no. man. Um, mm, that was baffling. Uh, I always go the wrong way. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, uh, yeah, the the pausing. No, that was and, a baffling choice. I yeah, I don't get it. I um, thought like, <laughs> was I losing internet? What was happening? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, check the cable box. I don't know what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> but when we see the big reveal of like the big room, this is not the couch that Lucky signed off on. I know that's not the couch that he picked out from the mall. Rob, you are so wrapped up in these details, bro. <laughs> what is going on? You're uh, missing movie here. There's a great movie with a plot of a family. <laughs> trying to get back and it's hinted and then later confirmed that there's a murder and it's classic 80s 90s villain stuff and you're like he didn't buy that couch this is fraud this is textbook fraud it is upper (laughs) abuse (laughs) well let's talk about that for a second though the the you you mentioned that like so i was actually looking away from the tv when that happened yeah. and and the um john delancey character uh says that lyle says that like he did it before he can do it again uh it was yeah. very understated especially for a disney channel movie 
especially everything is usually in your face with this kind of stuff, but it was very understated the fact that he may have been the one to kill Mr. Windsor. Like, that's interesting. They hinted at it a couple times. They hinted at it a couple times, that line that you just mentioned, and the flashback when he is trying to comfort Lucky, when Jack is trying to comfort Lucky, you realize that something's amiss, that Lucky wanted to go out because something was going on, and that's another kind of like breadcrumb that there was foul play afoot. Honestly, when we first saw that scene that you're talking about, I thought Mm -hmm. that that was going to be like him flashing back to the murder at that point. And at that point, we don't really know uh, that that's that there's been a murder. You thought it was going to be a little more obvious. Yes. And and, and they show him having what looks like just a a, you know, just a heart attack. It looks like natural causes. And so I didn't Mm -hmm. think about it again. I thought, okay, you've shown us what Lucky saw the actual death and it was natural causes. So we don't really need to worry about it. There being murder. And then there was that line. And then I think they said something else when they broke into the house, um, which again yeah. felt like I said, very Scooby-Doo meets uh, uh, home alone because they didn't set up the house for that kind of stuff, but they're just like bumbling yeah. idiots inside the house, stepping on the squeaky toys and arguing with each other and shooting each other with um, tranquilizer darts and, all kinds of stuff like that. So, and no one seems affected by the tranquilizer darts. By the way, I know you think in a movie like this you would get the over exaggerated tranquilizer dart effect, but no, you didn't. Um, I like how the three personality traits are all that those three characters have. One's conniving, one's dumb, one is rich and pretty. And that is it. There is nothing beyond surface level for these characters. And it uh, it was really a throwback to, like, I don't know, made me feel like my childhood. Because this definitely isn't something that felt like it was 1998. Did it feel like 1998 to you, Rob? Mm-mm. It felt of an earlier era. It felt like late late 80s. Early 90s. Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, it almost feels like a traditional Disney madcap family movie yeah absolutely yeah um so uh yeah so then you know they run away and and they get away and and uh and they're, they're done but then we you know so we cut back to the point where they're going to try they they tried to do it their own way because this shifty lawyer wanted 30 percent of their 64 million dollars they go back to yep. him and now it's going to be half of their money and, uh, and they didn't even negotiate. Like, okay, 30%, be like, hey, there's four of us. How about you take a quarter? And then when he's like 50, you'd be like, all right, you went from 30 to 50. Can we settle at like 40? So we still get 60%, 20%, 20%. I would have liked it. They, they didn't have a lot of gumption for villains. Can I ask you a completely unrelated question? It has nothing to do with anything other than the fact that I'm sure. curious. How do you think... Mm. The, the writers are sitting around the room. They're writing this movie for Kirk because he says, mm-hmm. give me a dog movie where I can really get into it. And so they make Sink this movie. Sink my teeth into it, you know? Yes. They make this movie and they go, how much did the old man have? $64 million. Yeah. So random. I don't know. Like, what? like, like they're, I mean, I don't well, know. Well, 37 is a very funny number and it's double 37. So that's what I thought. That makes it twice as funny? I guess. I don't know. But the writer of this film has only wrote one other thing, and it is a little movie that I'm sure you've all heard of uh, from 1996, The Legend of Gator Face. Oh, right. Yes. Obviously, the very classic, very famous Legend of Gator Face. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to yeah. say, though, i got to give props to Kirk Cameron because he committed – he committed he committed like give him everyone in this yeah everyone in this is like giving it their all they're chewing on the scenery they know exactly what movie they're in and that to me is a huge thing there's so many times you watch an actor and you're like what what movie are they in because they're not in this one and i kind of want to see the one that they're in but Everyone knows exactly what movie they're in. They are in, yep. like you said, a classic Disney madcap kind of romp. Yep. So 
walk me through this part. We're almost done here. Sure. Walk me through this part. We're in okay. the courtroom at the mm-hmm. end, and uh, and Jack has just proven that he can get down on all fours and be a dog and has some kind of mm-hmm. sort of mentalist trick that he can do with the dog to identify a pen and a chocolate bar. Um, so then all of a sudden he has this vision with Lucky about the murder, and he looks up and he stands up and he looks at – and he stands up. He stands up. He's he's out of the trance, I guess. And he looks at Lyle and says, "You you killed him. You killed him." Now there's no proof at this point, except for the the rantings of a guy who was literally just on the floor. Yeah. Um, and then Lyle pulls the panic lever immediately, yeah. and he whips yeah. out a gun in a courtroom. That's was on 1998. Him. That's really on him. Was 1998 really just like a little bit more lax when it came to that kind of stuff? Is that a hundred percent, Rob? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. By the way, <laughs> great acting by that bailiff who couldn't get to his holster in time. I appreciate that. Also, shout out to one of my all-time favorite character actresses, uh, Patricia Belcher. Um, she is uh, famous for being on Bones. She was also a judge on Bones, and she is one of my favorites. Anytime she pops up, I love seeing her. Yeah, so you got accused. You'd be like, oh, no, look, he's crazy. I didn't kill my uncle. I love my uncle. But no, when you pull the gun, that's like a pretty significant admission of guilt, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Innocent yeah. people don't usually pull the gun in the courtroom, which it would have been really funny if – one of the bailiffs just dropped him and that's how the movie ended just completely out of left field yeah patricia belcher is that who you were talking about yeah 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 she was on good luck charlie that's where i remember her from oh uh, yeah she was was, was yeah. yeah she was the next door neighbor another dog one good, right oh no that's dog with luck. a blog or just good Did Luck charlie have a dog good luck charlie charlie was a, a little girl dog that's right yeah. it was like her family writing video blogs to her yes at the end it was good luck charlie yeah uh, but yeah, so, so Charlie, good luck, Charlie. She was there. She was, uh, Mrs. Daphne from next door. Um, yeah. So, uh, so then everything, you know, everything comes up. Okay. Because even though he clearly was looking crazy Looney Tunes and nobody was going to actually address the fact that he used to be a dog psychic, but now that's kind of weird to try to digest. Um, now, like, you know, this guy's brought, brought out the gun. There's the Turner and Hooch moment where he jumps up to get Lyle, and we think he's mm-hmm. out, but he's just laying there because his ear got clipped somehow. I don't – That's a, that was a little strange. Um, but we're all worried about Lucky for half a second, and then everything's fine, and we go back to the house. It wraps up very quickly. They go back to the house, and uh, Allison's there with her daughter, and he's gotten her this puppy, and there's a party of some sort happening in the backyard. Dog and party. Every- just a big yeah. dog party. Yes, those usually happen in trees. And we're out. Yes. And, and so we're out, it, and 90 minutes has passed, and we're it, all it, better for it. it. But here's the thing is, they don't really make a romantic connection here. There's not, there's not a yeah. romantic thing. He says to Allison something about, you know, you said you like big families. I'd like you to be part of, or, you know, like be a part of this bigger family, and here are all the dogs. So he never, it, there's not a romantic connection there. I don't know... And that's fine. It, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just noting yeah. that it didn't happen, especially since this is his wife. They they easily could have done that, but it wasn't ever yeah. about that. It was always about the dog. It's about you know what? Scratch that. It was about the journey. It was, it about, was the journey. about the journey. It was about the growth along the way, yeah. and uh, both Lucky's growth and Jack's. And we, you know, we're better for it. Yeah, we are. And uh and also they they play the togetherness song at the end. Same song from that the is, beginning. That yeah. is song we've, bizarrely we've, bad. We we've come full circle. That's that's how beautiful it is. Um Yeah. When, sure. When it was over, sure. you when it was over, do you remember what Disney Plus recommended to you? Brink. A liar. I swear to God. Dawn really? said it in the chat earlier. It was Brink. That is not what was recommended to me. <laughs> what was recommended to you? Bluey. Oh, that's cute. I like that. And, and it doesn't matter if I rewind it and watch it again. It keeps going back to Bluey. 
Um, so maybe there is an algorithm at play here. I thought maybe there wasn't because I thought dog bluey makes sense. Bluey is what they're pushing. Yep. Totally do it. But you're saying you and Dawn went and Brink was what was suggested next. Brink was what was suggested. Yeah. Interesting. So, so I can't okay. find who performed togetherness. All I know is that it was uh, by um, composed by David Michael Frank and lyrics by Todd Smallwood, who um, not a ton of you know things credits to their name, but like who sang that song? I need to know. I just need to know. No, no, you don't. You know, like leave the mystery. I do. No, nope, leave the mystery. Wanna. It's fun. Uh, all right. So uh, again, uh, anything else? We I think we can wrap this up, right? Right. Yeah, I think just yeah. just like the movie, you know, in and out, Bing Bang Boom, send everybody okay. home happy. <laughs> uh, Jake was like Blue Heart for Bluey. So, uh, speaking of hearts, thank you so much to our Wigs members. So we love our Wigs, the WDWNT Interglobe Society. Thank you guys for being members of our Patreon program here at WDWNT. And if you don't know about it, go to patreon.com forward slash WDWNT to find out more. Uh, we appreciate you watching Deep in the Plus. Next Wednesday night, we've got another one for you. So, last week, Patrick and I did Onward. Uh, mm -hmm. This week, You Lucky Dog. And next week, we are doing Home on the Range. Uh, the 20 years of home on uh, since home on the range, um, and and very God excited bless to yeah. Who's ever yeah. doing that? You're yeah, excited. I I haven't seen it in forever. I'm very excited to watch it again. You so, should. So it, it it was the last. It is hand -drawn as bad as people are saying. But it was the last hand drawn animation before they brought hand drawn animation back for five minutes to do uh, uh Princess and the Frog and then took it away again. So yeah, you know it'll be fun. I'll do a little bit of um. We'll do a little bit of uh, yodeling. It'll be great. Um, <clears throat> and then also, uh, we had a great, uh, <laughs> we had a great, a lot of fun on Park Center last Sunday night, uh, including uh, Patrick was a little water park curious. Um, a little water so, park curious. Yeah. So please uh, go back and enjoy uh, Park Center from last week, and we will be back again this Sunday night at 9 p.m. And not only will we have uh, the news of the week for you in 60 minutes or less, but we will also be talking about the wrap up of March Madness, which happens tomorrow night. They're wrapping up March Madness on News Tonight. Come back, hang out with us, and we're going to talk about uh, our thoughts on it, uh, which is the Park Center tradition. So thank you guys uh, who watch Park Center. Tell a friend, bring them by. It'll be it'll be fun. Last last Sunday night we were going against the Oscars. This Sunday night we're going against Green Beer. So. Um, you know, it, it'll be I will be ready for this show in the tippiest, toppiest shape. But no green beer. I do not drink green beer, Rob. I am, I am sophisticated. <laughs> I am okay. 42. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere on St. Patrick's Day that has green beer. Yeah. Or on a Sunday night, for gosh sakes. Yeah. So I got Park Center to do. <laughs> Yeah, Desi is in the chat. Everyone gets water park curious at some point. Uh, we really enjoyed that. It I was might a, go. It was a little exchange between April. Patrick and Desi. So, yeah. Um, yeah, go check it out, Park Center. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching Deep in the Plus. Uh, Patrick, I have one last thing to tell you. Yeah. 200. We've done 200 reviews. Me and you? No, on the, you and I have done a lot, but we've done 50, yeah. uh, 50 plus. But yeah, uh, yeah, we've done 200 reviews on Deep in the Plus. Didn't want to make a big this deal about 200? it. This is 200? This is 200. Oh, man, we should have made a bigger deal and done a better movie than this. We should have done... No, right, this, is yeah, right where I, this is right where I wanted it to be. This is right where I wanted Slot it to be. Slot to, to 200, and here's yeah. to 200 more? <clears throat> I, dude, there is so much we could be doing, and I expect at some point when uh, Disney Plus and Hulu actually merge merge into one app, we may have some decisions have to make about what we're going to talk about, because that may open up that, a whole cause... new world. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Don't so you again, close your eyes. a whole new world. Mm -hmm. I said, don't oh. you dare close your eyes. Yep, you're so sweet. All right, thank you guys again so much for supporting Deep in the Plus, uh, for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. I hope you have a great St. Patrick's Day, and, uh, and we will hopefully see you next Sunday night for Park Center right here on WDWNT-TV. Have a great one, Doug. Take care.